Congratulations to our graduates. That day is finally here. Uh, before we give you your diplomas, I think there are some special people here who need to be thanked a little bit more. We've already said a couple of words, nice words about mothers, but let's give some very explicit thank you. Would all the mothers of graduates in this fine church please stand up? Please stand up and be recognized. Would all the fathers of graduates please stand up? And finally, would all the grandparents of graduates please stand up? I recently became a grandpa myself, so I had to fit that in there for sure. So, so you're probably thinking, all that stands between you and your diploma is yet another speech from Dina Bella. Well, you'd be wrong, because there's going to be two speeches, <laughs> one from me and one from your valedictorian, so I will keep mine short. So approximately four miles south of here, and exactly 60 years ago last summer, Dr. Martin Luther King gave his famous I Have a Dream speech. Here's a little known fact. The whole I Have a Dream part was not in the speech, was not in the written text that he was delivering that day. Did you know that? His speech was the last of a long day of speeches and songs, and it was supposed to be the climax of that eventful day. But for some reason, it was falling flat. It wasn't connecting with, with his audience. And he could see that, and so could the people around him. One of the people around him was Mahalia Jackson. She was known at the time as the queen of gospel. She was a great singer, famous gospel singer. She had sung a couple of songs earlier that day as part of that event, and she could see that Dr. King was not having the same connection with the audience that he usually got. So all of a sudden, she yells out, turns to him and yells out, and she says, tell him about the dream, Martin. Tell him about the dream. And he pauses. He puts his written text aside and starts to ad lib. And that's where we get the beautiful lines, the I have a dream speech that is now part of history all just came kind of straight out of his heart, not from the, not from the prepared text, including, including that famous line where he said, I have a dream that my four children one, will one day live in a nation where they will be judged not by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. The content of your character. This is what I want us to focus on for a moment. So on top of your studies, the knowledge and the skills that you have gained in these last four years, very important in themselves, but on top of that, more important has been the work you have done on the content of your character. And what is that content? The students, of course, know this. The content of your character are the virtues, the habits of excellence that you have been honing over these last four years, including especially the virtues of practical wisdom, the habit of making wise decisions, which you have been perfecting in your case method discussions, the, the, the debates you had in class, the debates you had outside of class, the virtue of justice, which is the habit of treating everybody fairly, the virtue of self-discipline, the habit of only giving in to your feelings and desires when it makes sense to do so, and you've been honing that habit 
every time you got up early in the morning for a practice that you didn't feel like going to, or that you avoided going out with friends because you needed to study, even though you felt like going out with the friends. You've been holding this habit. And then last of all, but not least, the virtue of courage, which you'll remember is the habit not of having no fear. That's not in anybody's control. It's the habit of continuing to move forward, even though you might be feeling afraid. So as you leave here, I want to remind you just one last time that the happiness, the health, and even the success of your life going forward depends foundationally on these four habits, and that you can continue to cultivate them for the rest of your lives. And remember that there are two ways, principally, for cultivating those habits. The first one is what you've been doing for these last few years, day in, day out, which is practice. Remember that little changes practice daily have a huge impact over the long term on your life. And the second, and I'm teeing off our graduation speaker, Jonathan Rumi, Rumi, earlier today here, the second way to grow in virtue is simply to ask our Lord to make up the difference. So if you're trying to avoid something that's tempting you or drawing you and you think you don't have enough self-discipline, you don't have, the habit is not yet strong enough in you, just ask him to make up the difference. If you're facing a challenge that you need to overcome and you fear that you don't have enough courage, that you haven't yet built sufficiently the habit of courage, then ask him to make up the difference. He will not disappoint you. That's it. That's my speech. So go now and be the successes that you were created to be. God bless you all.